on today's episode. In a recent video when I was soldering away with all the fumes coming off, it occurred to me that I wasn't setting a very good example to those either new to the hobby or, or youngsters. Uh, it doesn't matter too much to me. I'm too old to be worrying about the, uh, the long-term effects of this, but obviously if you're just starting out, you need to take uh, adequate precautions. Today I'm going to address that. Many years ago I was told that the only things I should address are envelopes or golf balls. I thought that was a bit harsh. My first port of call whenever looking for a new design is obviously Thingiverse. There's dozens of designs of fume extractors. This one seems to fit my criteria pretty much perfectly. It's for an 80 centimeter square fan and is powered by a single 18650 type uh, lithium cell with a little charging board which I guess will be the TP4056 which I've used many times and a little boost circuit to increase the voltage to the fan for, for 12 volts and as the fan takes very very little current um, that will power it for long enough to do our soldering work. I've already logged into Thingiverse, let's download the files. I'm going to use the filter pocket as well so we want to download all of these files and here we can see the individual STL files. The next thing will be to import those files into our slicer of choice. Now we can add the objects into our slicer. I don't think they're all going to fit so let's just take a look first at the base and we're going to need to flip that over so we rotate it around the x-axis by 90 degrees and that's going to put it flat on the bed there and I don't think there'll be any need for supports. Let's export the g-code for that. I've already set up my printer settings. I always like to use this g-code viewer to check the g-code before I actually go and go and print it. Here's our base g-code. I like to check the model size is more or less correct. What we can do using this viewer is to go up through the different layers and just check that everything looks as it should and that looks okay to me. Now we can go ahead and print that. The other two items to print is the top of the box and the cover for the filter material. Once again I've added them in and rotated them through 90 degrees and spaced them out onto the print bed here. Now we can go ahead and export the g-code for this. And once again, I'd like to simulate it. That all looks good. So when the base has finished printing, we'll get these printed as well. The main case has finished printing and I'm very pleased with the results of that. It looks very neat indeed. I've acquired the other pieces that I need from an old PC power supply, this Wham fan. I was a fan of Wham, very sad. And that's 12 volts at 140 milliamps, so that's going to be fine. From the same power supply, I've robbed a little rocker switch. Uh, the original design calls for a, a round switch, but uh, I'm just going to open that out and we'll put that switch in there. Let's just test our Wham fan. Yeah, so it's uh, blowing out that way, so it'll fit into the case pretty much like that. Making a bit of a racket, but it's going to be standing up like that, so there should be no problem. Other things that we need is obviously an 18650 cell. This is out of a dead um, power bank, so that will fit into there. This is the 4056, 4056 being a USB 5 volt lithium cell charger. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how it was supposed to be mounted. There are these holes. I think that calls probably for some hot melt glue once the uh, wires have been soldered onto it. And that's about all there is to it. While the uh, front fan cover and the cover here is being printed, let's go ahead and uh, assemble this. Something I forgot to mention earlier 
is obviously we're going to need some form of boost circuit to take the single cell voltage up to 12 volts for the fan. I couldn't find the exact model that uh, was, was in the original picture with this potentiometer through 90 degrees, but I'm sure we can still fit this in. To set it up, I've just put my bench power supply onto 2.5 volts, which is the cutoff voltage of the TP4056. That may seem rather low, but that's the way it is. So again, with two two and a half volts going in at the moment out of the bag, it's time to tweak the potentiometer. Now, you may find that you'll have to wind this a considerable number of turns before it appears to start doing anything. Uh, it's just coming up there now. Some people have actually thought these were faulty, uh, but it just does take uh, a rather large number of turns to get things to happen. Coming up here, six volts, seven volts. As it's a fan, we don't have to be uh, too particular about it. So there we are at about 12 volts. Excellent. Now we can get on with the rest of the assembly. There's a good length of cable on the fan, so we should be able to wire up everything that we need. We just need to make sure that we will be able to remove this as we need to bolt in the filter cover. Guesstimate how much cable we need for that. This cable is clearly going to go on the output of our boost converter, which is going to sit in the in the bottom there. Of course, what I could really use now is a, is a fume extractor. Har, 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 he, 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 he. So with everything in place, we should be able to switch on now. And we can test our charge circuit. There we can see our charge indicator glowing red there. That will change to green, obviously, when it's, when it's charged. I don't think we'll be able to see those very clearly. We might just see them through these holes here. Maybe these holes were, in fact, meant for external LEDs. I don't really know. There wasn't very much... Uh, explanation on the Thingiverse site. Let's get this tapped into place now with some hot melt glue. Taking the precaution of taping over the ends of the cell, uh, the first thing we need to put in place is our little boost circuit. There we have it now with the, the cell just resting in the, in the top there, the two boards glued in, and we're good to go. Hopefully the other parts will have finished printing by now. Here we can see the finished printing of the case and fan cover. A little bit of cleaning up to do there, but nothing too excessive. And similarly with the case cover, there's uh, very little work to do to, to clean that up. We can continue with our assembly. We're into the home straight and the final assembly now. I've cut some filter material and, as always, links down in the description to uh, the parts that I'm using. This then has to bolt on to the front of the housing there. And I'm just using some M4 screws. that in place we can now replace the fan. To hold the rear cover in place we're just going to use the screws that uh, originally held it into the PC case. And there we have it. Let's see how it works in practice.
don't think we're capturing that very well on this screen now. I think that's a successful test. Uh, at least 90% of the smoke is going into the filter and no more running eyes.